Hello and welcome to the GMBN Tech Show. What have we got coming up this week? Well, we've got new shoes dropped by Fox. We do indeed. And Ibis have dropped a new, old kind of carbon hardtail. Mm, and we do the pros and cons of uh, internal routing through your headset. Mm, yeah. <laughs> it's all coming up on the Dead Jet Show! No! no! Too many tech. spanners. It's tech spanners. <laughs> Okay, well, as you can see, Dot is shrunk in the wash. I no, did. Oh, it's yeah. not done. Had a long shower. <laughs> Had a long shower. <laughs> this is Blake from GMBN. You should know him. Um, certainly know him from Blake Builds, actually. We do actually use tools. You I do use tools, yeah. I'm very familiar with them after a year long battle with a van. Yeah, in inter <laughs> in internal cable routing, I do understand. And this is what the topic is all about this it week. It is. What, what, what do you think? What do you think? Are there any pros, cons that you think of straight away? Pros? Looks cleaner, doesn't it? No more cables cables hanging out the front of your forks and blah blah and banging and chattering away it all goes yeah. internally um, I like it yeah but then I dislike it at the same time when it comes to a bit of maintenance yeah I guess so the whole point of it is to make it neater but also uh, manufacturers being able to put uh, cables through the headset um, and not going through tiny little ports in the head tube of a frame means that A, you should be able to make a str uh, stronger and lighter frame and also it should be less fiddly, sort of, with sort of. Um, tiny you know, cables going through tiny ports. We've all probably had some nightmares with internal cable routing. Well, if you're folding ca well, pushing cables through a big open headset, then that should, in theory, be easier. But what you gain, you sort mm. of lose sometimes with some of the designs of having to fiddle around with um, spaces and whatnot. You've got it on one of your bikes, haven't I you? I do. I've got on my Nuke Proof Megawatt, so my e-bikes. Go, it goes through the through yeah, the, through the headset and it looks clean. It does, it yeah, st yeah. It stops the rattle a little bit, yeah. a lot less rattle. Have you had to do any maintenance no, on it No, not yet. <laughs> not yet. I know a guy that can do all that really? for me. <laughs> yeah. Doddy. Well, or, yeah. Someone like you. Maybe, maybe. Maybe. I might be busy that day. <laughs> um, but basically, I think it's one of the better solutions, that, because it kind of goes through a bit of a spacer and then just uh, flops around the steerer tube and into the main mm -hmm. frame. So that means you can still change all your spacers and your stem and all that. So I think that's a good thing. Um, there are some other slightly more complicated designs. I think Scott's starting to push the barriers a little bit because their cables go up the steerer through some spacers mm -hmm. and then kind of come out around the stem uh, which means if you want to change spaces uh, you have to use these special Scott spaces that uh, pull, apart, yeah, pull apart and then you have to move them around and I don't think you can get a proper slammed kind okay. of stem on mm. that um, so I think that's some, uh, it's probably important to note that not all designs are the same. Not all, no. you know, they're not all equal. Um, some other people doing it well, I think Merida, their new 160, mm -hmm. is doing something similar to your Megawatt um, with the spacer. Spaces. So that looks good. And they've also got this really large um, servicing port underneath the down tube that you can drop open. So like internal routing, you wouldn't even need uh -huh. to cable thread it or anything like that. Question from so. the viewers that has just come in. Look, see, yeah, it yeah, says, no what about all the mud that goes in there? <laughs> Well, what you can about close all the, the mud? door? You can, you can okay. close the door, yeah. There's no evidence to suggest you'd get more mud mm. through a spacer than you will a porthole, for okay. example. If anything, I think they're a snugger fit on some of them, so I think it might be better. <laughs> but um, should we throw it over to the viewers? Yeah. Yeah. All right then, guys, what do you think? Do you have headset cable routing? Uh, do you prefer it to your old style of internal cable routing? Do you think it's a good idea, a bad idea? Uh, who's doing it well and who's doing it bad? Let us know down in the comments below. New in the world of news, well, Fox have dropped some new shoes. Don't what are you look saying? Good. Yeah, I they like look them. all right, don't they? Um, so they've got three models up for grabs now. Two are clips and one are flats. Um, and basically they've had input from the likes of Greg Minar, Laurie Greenland, Jackson Goldston, uh, Steve Pete and Nina Hoffman. Oh, so um, yeah, yeah, they've got a big line up there. Um, so you've got a clip model with laces and a strap, or you've got a clip model with dual boa retention dials. Um, and then the flat is obviously for flat pedals. Uh, you've got an ultra tack rubber sole, welded up a construction, reinforced toe for rock strikes. You name it, it's on there. 
um, and you've got a good selection of colours, black, grey, red and mocha, which looks That's um, the one I would go. Like... That's the one I'd go, don't you mock it? I like mocha. that one. And starting up with the Union Flat one at €149 Euros or £129 <coughs> or $149. So not so bad. Mm, I like him. Keep well, an eye on that. Well, Ibis have just resurrected this new hardtail. Yeah. I'm a big advocate for the hardtail, but this is their DV9. It's a do-it-all carbon fibre hardtail frame. It has a 120mm fork, it's a 29-inch wheel bike, its chain stays is 425mm, its head angle is 66.5 degree head angle, which is uh, all right. Yeah, trailish. Trailish, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it can take a 2.6 tyre with 203 rotors, so that's pretty aggressive braking power. It's got three build kits available from 3,499, and you can get the frame only for 1,499. Ooh, dollars. Good in that purple. Carbon. It's gonna be a rigid ride, that. Frame. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Looks good though. Okay, comments time from you lovely people. And last week we were talking about how adjustable is too adjustable. Mm. So let's dive in. I've got Lopon12 who says, um, just no, I, I think it's just another thing to break or make a noise if it goes loose. Have the balls to make the right bike in the first place. Yeah. Some tough words there from Logan. Well, that is tough, but I got one from Dan it says, I ride a hardtail. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> For a reason, I have barely mastered the adjustment on his fork, which is a bit crazy, but I don't envy my full suspension friends. True, you don't have all that gubbins at the back going, you yeah. don't know what's going on about. Why have adjustability if you're not going to use it though? Exactly. Try it, try yeah, it, you might I, like it. I've got a bike that's got full adjustment on the rear shock. Oh yes, tell me about my, your Nuke Proof. My Nuke Proof Mega yeah. has got that push shock on the rear and apparently yeah. it's got like 25 settings yeah. per click. Like Compression per, and rebound. Uh, it's nuts. And, I had to do my homework and go on their website. And, and it's got a, a switch that can switch between two different settings of those settings Exactly. As well. One could be do for... You use it? Yes, one's for jump mode. Oh yeah? What's a bit the more stiffer one? and the other one's just... Nice. There you go, learn from Blake guys. Yeah. Use your adjustability. Um, so Nomaz says, I run my flip chip in the high position. That's um, unusual. My, most of my friends run it all in low, just everything uh, low. Um, and I think simple, straightforward flip chips are great. Yeah. I like the flip chip. I run mine in high. Do you? Yeah, on my Do Spectral. You? Yeah, it's on high. Oh, so controversial. I know, it is, isn't it? <laughs> right, go on from John. Adjust, adjustability is a good thing, but myself, I like to spend a few days changing the setup. Once I have it the way I like it, it'll never be moved again. Yeah. There we go. I so if you've nailed people. it, done. Yeah, when when you flip yours into high, do you touch it, everyone? Oh, no. No, that's no, it. That's Just it. Done. Done. Yeah. Uh, so Slogfester says, change the flip chip on my Trek top fuel regularly. It took me a while to work out how to move it easily. Um, it definitely adds to the bike's versatility. It does. Ah, and Tom Walling says the Bionicon gimmick actually seemed to work well. Uh, when I demoed a bike back around in 2009, I dropped the front and successfully made it up a steep rocky climb uh, in my local area that I never been able to clear before. So he was able to like push his forks down so everything steepened up and turned it into a cross-country bike. What? That's pretty cool. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't okay. worry about it. Thanks for your comments. Right, I thought we'd do a bike cave because you like bike caves. I love a bike cave. You've done a bike cave. I've done it. one, yes, and I was working on it on the weekend. Go and watch that. I've done two. You've done two. I've done two. Thanks, cameraman Jack, Thank for you, reminding him what one? he's done. Isle of Wight. <laughs> oh, the Isle of Wight. I've done three and one's what? on wheels. What? Yeah. Fair play. Well, we'll try and leave that in the description <laughs> below. Uh, so bike caves today, I've got a couple for you actually. Mm -hmm. um, starting up at this top one, um, he's managed to make a bike cave out of his spare room here. That's so, the perfect thing to do. That yeah. is, why, why would you have it outdoors? You've got heating, <laughs> you've got a carpet, you've got your mega plates, you've obviously done the mega avalanche. Look at that, enjoy it. He's done racing, this guy. But, so this is Daniel from Poland and he's actually built this wooden framework and put some hooks on it so that he can store all of his bike up upright so that he can Perfect. make loads of space. I and like then it. all of his spares are in that wardrobe next Look at to that. it. I think that's brilliant. Um, I love a good racking system. Yeah. And then um, on the next one over, 
We Ooh. have Gareth, who is in Mordor. I'm pretty sure he's not in Mordor. But uh, <laughs> this is his bike cave. And that, what you're looking at there, it says, this is my uh, super sketchy bench. Uh, he's actually he made, made that for... out of wood. Yeah, you can see that. I mean, nothing makes you work your core better than thinking that it might all fall down, <laughs> all fall down, down on your head. <laughs> mm, I'll be wearing a helmet, man. I know, and then an axe up here yeah, just to finish just, off the job. Just yeah. Yeah, sunk. Or is that a mattock? I, I, That's a mattock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Trail, trail yeah. builder. See? Yeah. Like it. And he's got a punch bag in there and loads and loads of tools. Oh, so he said it's not super clean, but hey, that looks like absolutely everything is in there, doesn't it? Yeah. I can. You wouldn't want from more. Cool, you wouldn't even... There's tons in there. And look closely oh, on the screen. Oh, that's Donnie falling off. <laughs> that, that weirdly... Isn't that, that you behind him? That's me behind him. Yeah. That is a, a place called Pontypool, and I think that was Doddy's first time yeah. riding. It was. On GMBN. <laughs> and he went straight in the bushes and I could not stop laughing. It's definitely... He broke his brand new phone. No. He broke his brand new phone. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's brand definitely new the best That's the crash. phone he's still got it now. It's the best crash of GMBN yeah. presenters of all funny. time, I think. It's funny. <laughs> it's funny. And then my final one is from Alberto from Oakland in California, who's also just got a spare room converted into a bike cave come office, like come it. sleeping quarters for visitors. Um, and check out that Yeti hanging over right above, above the his head. bed. I don't know if that's scary or not. Or, that's uh, that's that dreamy. Like, yeah? That's is like that his dreams are like up there above him. Like what you should be dreaming of. Yeah, hard tales. <laughs> what about the hard tales? <laughs> and another sort of upright storage solution in the back. I'm <laughs> absolutely loving upright. It yeah. saves so much space when you can use the vertical. And he's been watching GMBN. It's yes. on the screen. Look at that. GMB, why are you not looking at GMBN Tech? Mm. Outrage. Anyway, thank you very much for your bike caves. Don't forget to upload some of yours into the uploader. Link is in the description below. Well, anyway, that's all we've got time for. So thanks for stopping by and do join the debate about headset cable routing or indeed stem cable routing, uh, if you like, down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See ya.